You know, it's it's definitely been a crazy last 18 months for sure. And I, I had to pivot a little bit as far as, I mean, I don't even want to say income streams, but just stuff that I found, you know, interest in. And a lot of it was not music related. <laughs> you know, I took a lot of time to just be home and be a dad, be a husband, you know, kind of get back to reality a little bit, not to get on a plane all the time. Uh, but, you know, I got to make a living. So uh, thankfully I'm able to teach, I'm able to record, I'm able to do other things besides just touring. But I definitely missed the live performance aspect. So uh, it's nice to kind of get back into that now as shows are starting to happen again, sort of, some, in some cases. Um, but I also took some time to just be creative, you know, after I kind of got over the whole mess of everything and found some inspiration. I mean, for a while I didn't, you know, I was like, well, I don't really like anything I'm playing. I don't like playing the guitar right now. I just, this sucks. <laughs> but eventually it stopped sucking and uh, started working on some more music, wrote, wrote and recorded a record and put out a record at the top of 2021. So that was kind of nice. Deep, the Baritone Sessions Volume 2, which means there's a Volume 1. Um, and both records are kind of an extension of my compositions where I center them around the baritone guitar and they're kind of funk rock kind of fusion of styles but uh, the baritone guitar is in the forefront and it's really exciting music to put together and I'm, I'm really liking playing it live. It's, it's, it's a little different than maybe my more quote-unquote traditional guitar instrumentals but it's a fun extension of my personality. I'm a very rhythmic kind of groove oriented player to begin with and one day when I started playing what I would normally play on a regular guitar on a baritone it just had this sound that I hadn't really discovered and so it felt natural but now it's like okay I have this giant instrument that I can't necessarily solo on <laughs> so I got to make sure that these riffs and these hooks these grooves are are where the kind of melodic uh, hook content is maybe more so than just like traditional melodies so it kind of made me write in a different way but uh, it's something that I, I feel comfortable doing. Um, so it's a fun, yeah, it's a fun kind of extension of my personality, I think. I've learned to, to kind of get the riffs to a point where they're just complicated enough to be interesting, but not so much so that they aren't memorable. What makes the baritone music work is that everybody's sort of centered in this one path together, and that's why it grooves the way it does, you know? you've got to relate to it the same way that you would relate to a melody that you would hum, right? So you, you are, you can, maybe you can sing a riff, you can tap your foot to it. It's got to have this kind of internal thing that sticks with you. Um, and it's just got to be funky, man. Like it's got to groove, the pocket's got to be there. And, it, and in a lot of cases, maybe the more simple the riff, the better. I didn't want it to sound overly technical for the sake of being overly technical because that's just not who I am. I'm always writing, ideas either in my head or on the instrument and then documenting them somehow. Sometimes, yeah, it's just an iPhone memo or maybe I'll film myself if it's like an odd fingering that I am not gonna remember or something because uh, I don't really write out stuff. Maybe I'll sit at my computer and kind of like produce a demo. And then when I'm feeling like it's time to make a record, I go through the whole collection of stuff that's occurred over the past several months or years or whatever and find the, the things that really mean something. and flesh those out. So, the, which is interesting because the, the second baritone record really kind of wrote itself in a, about a month or two. Because I had gone through this period of like, oh my gosh, the world is over, I don't have any gigs, and just kind of didn't really like music. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I was like, I like music again, I need to make a record. <laughs> and it all just kind of <laughs> happened like that. So that was kind of exciting and terrifying at the same time. You know, I had the opportunity to to do the guitar with PRS, so that was a really cool way to, to stay creative, which obviously is very unique. Well, the story of that particular instrument, I guess, is probably 30 some odd years in the making, I suppose, because I remember being 14 and thinking, or, you know, dreaming one day of having a guitar with my name on it that I, you know, helped build, right? And so, so having that all kind of come full circle was, was incredible. And I had had a relationship with PRS for, for quite a few years, and they kind of were like, hey, do you want to design a guitar? Like, why don't we make you your guitar? And I was like, what do you mean? I have a guitar, you know? <laughs> like, it didn't, I forgot that I had wanted a signature guitar or something, right? And they said, no, 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 let's, let's design something. And I knew they had a, a, a foothold in sort of like the bolt-on style stuff, and so I was like, well, cool, let's see what we can 
come up with. And I kind of, you know, I kind of tested them a little bit because they're not really known for that. I mean, they're, they're a humbucker, set neck kind of company, right? But they are also PRS, which means they can do whatever they want at an incredibly high level. And so I said, cool, you like, so let's see what you can do, you know, and, and yeah, they did it. <laughs> so I put my foot in my mouth. No, it was a really cool process. A lot of back and forth, a lot of tweaking of specs and capacitors and magnet winds, you know, for wire on the pickups and all these things that I didn't know, because I don't build guitars, right? I just play them. <laughs> but I know what I like, and I, I like to have an instrument that I can put my hands on and hear myself. I've never had a signature guitar before, and if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it from the beginning, you know. And, and of course, there's influences from my favorite instruments in that instrument, of course, and I use that to kind of like create something that I feel like is now bringing my sound forward, I think. And so it was great to do it. It's great to work with Paul and his crew because they're just really passionate, you know. It, it, it never felt like I was painting by numbers or doing anything like that. It was like, let's try it. If it sucks, we'll try something else. <laughs> like, let's keep going till we get exactly what we want. And that's what, I, that's what you want when you're building a guitar, you know. So much of my early career was just spent learning how to be a prolific working guitar player. So I studied a million different guitar players because I knew I needed to at least try to be able to be convincing in a million different things so I could get work. That's part of being a session player is that like you're gonna, People are going to use references to get what they want out of you. Not because they don't think you have your own sound, but sometimes that's just a way to describe something. And it puts you in a, you know, like if somebody came to me and said, hey, I need like an edge style U2 delay part. That can offend me. <laughs> I know exactly what that means, right? Because that's a very iconic thing, you know? Um, but that's, that's just kind of part of doing the session thing. And you know, it still happens. Did it, you know, hey Mark, give me like a wild Steve Vai kind of sound. And I'm like, well, I can't really do that, but you know, I think I know what you mean, right? But yeah, I think people are, you know, they want what I do on their record and totally cool. But if they want me to try and do something else, like that's cool too. I get it, you know, it's like you get into a session and, and they, yes, the artist knows what you can do, but they also are gonna give you instruction that may not have anything to do with you. <laughs> and so you just, figure it out. If you're gonna get into any kind of like working musician stuff, you're gonna have to sound like things that might not be you, and that's okay. Even the most unique guitar player, you know, might have to be a thing that they're not. That's just being flexible. Hey, it's Mark Latirium. You can check out my signature PRS guitar and J-Rocket Overdrive pedal at AmericanMusical.com.